Hey, if you are interested in doing bookkeeping for a medical practice, then you're in the right spot. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about five different things. So I'm gonna talk about EOBs, I'm gonna talk about medical billing codes, I'm gonna talk about HIPAA, and then collections and write-offs. So this is my series on how to do bookkeeping for different industries. It's meant to be kind of an overview or an introduction to medical billing. And if we haven't met before, my name is Morgan and my website is finepoints.biz. I would love to have you as a subscriber to my YouTube channel if you're interested in bookkeeping. I have a video every single Tuesday at the moment. So if you live in the United States, you probably have a general idea of how our medical process works. Um, you just might not know like the behind the scenes billing on what is happening like through your insurance and all that. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is just kind of of the vocabulary of what an EOB is so it, so it is an explanation of benefits so it's letting you know like what services you got and what was sent to insurance and then how much was covered by insurance usually once it gets approved or not which I'll talk about later and how much remaining money you owe so it's kind of just like an overall summary of you know what's going on and, and it's what needs to get approved by an insurance company so if you as a bookkeeper are working in medical billing you're probably going to be working with a lot of EOBs and I I do not claim to be an expert in medical billing so let me know in the comments if you have any better knowledge or resources that would be helpful to the community. I did work for a speech pathologist for a couple years and so I did medical billing for her so I picked up a lot from that and of course every business is kind of specific but then also as I was researching for this video some things kind of started coming back to me I was like oh yeah there's like the modifiers or there's this or that so I have a little bit of experience but I'm not an expert by any means. All right, medical billing codes. So as the finance person in a medical field, you're gonna have a specialized set of codes that the doctors in your office generally use. So if it is a physical therapist, they're probably gonna have, I don't know, 10 or 20 or maybe more things that they do to people. It would be like the initial screening or like these exercises, or we recommend them being, that they go do this other thing. So there's gonna be different codes. And within the US medical system, I found that there's three different types of coding. And if you care, their names are the ICD-10, which is what we used. I think the number might change depending on when they updated it. So when I was a bookkeeper, that's what we used. Um, there's the CPT and the HCPSC, level two. So you can Google more about that if you really want to get into the nitty gritty, but just so you know, there's different coding systems and your medical office is probably gonna use one of them. So when I worked at this medical office, the office had a separate HIPAA compliant, which I'm gonna explain a little more about HIPAA, but they had a HIPAA compliant system that they used. They had a system they used and I had to log into that system. So I could log in there, see the patient information and what I needed to bill for each person. So within that other system, not QuickBooks, I would see there was a method for me to see, okay, there was a new appointment this day. There was like five appointments this, this day probably. And I need to bill for each of those patients. So then I would, within that system, I would put in the codes and send it off to the insurance company. And then the next step in that process, you know, takes time for the insurance company to make sure to give their answer about how much is covered. But after the insurance company answers, it is also in that same system. And then there's a remaining client balance. Say that balance is $30. Then my job would be to invoice the patient for that amount. And I would do that through QuickBooks. So you're probably familiar with this process. The insurance pays some, and then there's a leftover amount that you pay. So that's the amount that I would invoice. All right, I digressed a little bit from the medical codes, but a couple more things about the coding in particular is there's a code and then a modifier, like another little piece of the code. Um, so that has to be correct in order for it to get approved. And then in my experience, it could be the case that some doctors were authorized to perform procedures that others were not. So you kind of have to learn their industry and learn how things work in that practice. And hopefully the doctors and the staff in the company that you're working for have a pretty deep knowledge of that because they've been, you know, that's their job and they've been working with this for a while. So two common reasons that a claim would get rejected is because one, it has the incorrect code or two, it has the incorrect modifier. And then a claim can either be rejected or denied. So rejected means that there was some error that the insurance company can see. Like maybe there was missing information, the patient's information wasn't correct, they didn't have their social if they needed it, um, the code was wrong, etc. So that's rejected, so that's gonna cause more work for you as the medical biller to go back and find whatever they needed or maybe they need a pre-approval, sometimes that's a thing also. So find the missing information, send it back again to the insurance company. But if your claim is denied, then that means they said, no, we will not cover this. 
And if you guys disagree, then you actually need to go through an appeals process to figure that out. So you may have actually had to do that with some of your own medical things. I know that's not uncommon to appeal if something is not covered the first time. All right, so obviously as the medical biller, you have you know a big responsibility to make sure things are accurate. So I mean, in theory, like a dishonest medical practice could overbill for things, right? So they're doing maybe a smaller task, and they bill for a bigger task and then they would get more money for that, right? I know this is a random example, but one time my husband went to the doctor and he for a checkup and then he told the doctor, oh, I have something is hurting right here on my chest or something. And then the doctor or the medical biller probably ended up billing for like a heart consult or something like much more extravagant than, you know, the doctor spent maybe a minute extra like listening to his heart or something. I'm not saying that that doctor was being dishonest, like maybe that is what they do for like a heart checkup or whatever or a consult. But from our perspective as the patient, we were like, we don't think we really got that service. It seemed kind of like an up charge to us. So in that case, we actually were able to go back to the insurance company or the doctor and let them know, you know, was this really a necessary charge? And they ended up saying, no, it wasn't because the doctor just spent like a couple minutes, you know, discussing this side problem. All right. And I tell that story just to kind of show that there can be a little bit of gray area or miscommunication about the services provided. So as the medical biller, you're getting your information from the doctor. So it's not really your job to make that decision, but it is an important job that you need to make sure is done correctly. All right, and just a quick side note before I get onto HIPAA stuff is that as a bookkeeper, you may not be doing all of these processes depending on how big the company is. They might have a specific medical biller who codes things and then also a bookkeeper who does everything in QuickBooks. So that'll just depend on how the business is set up and maybe how you want it to be. So if you want to market yourself as someone who does medical billing and bookkeeping and you could charge a higher rate and you're really specialized, like good for you, you do that. All right, HIPAA in the United States is a way to keep patient information confidential basically. So it stands for Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. So just like how lawyers trust accounts are very regulated and you have to be really careful with them, check out my video that I did about lawyer, the lawyer niche right here. This is what the thumbnail looks like. I'll link it down below. Just like lawyers, trust accounts are very regulated. Same with HIPAA. There's rules that you must follow with good reason too, because you want to keep people's information, their personal information confidential. So I'm pretty sure that QuickBooks is not HIPAA compliant. Leave a comment down below if that, if you know differently or if there's a way to make it HIPAA compliant, but basically you can't store any patient information in QuickBooks. So that is something good to know. That's why we had that separate program that contained all the patient information um, when I worked for the medical practice. And with HIPAA guidelines, you just need to have an extra layer of protection when it comes to passwords, to leaving stuff out on your desk. Everything should be locked up. And I think it even has to be double locked. So like when you leave for the night, the door has to be locked and then the file cabinet has to be locked. Emails should be encrypted. I know a lot of places have doors with like keypads or like pin, like the cards that you swipe. So again, your office, I'm sure will know about HIPAA and the guidelines they have to follow, but that is just something very important as a medical biller that you need to be aware of. All right, my next section I called collections. And that's just basically to let you know that the whole process is longer and more complicated than typical invoicing. So usually when you invoice, you know, even as a customer, I'm gonna pay my electric bill right away when I get it. But I know the medical stuff sometimes takes longer to process, so I, as the patient, am not as motivated to pay it right away. So that is gonna be the case with your clients when you're a medical biller as well, most likely. Because again, like we talked about, you submit it, it goes to the insurance, it could get rejected, and then you have to resubmit, and then you have to bill for the extra. So this process at the worst could take months and months. So you as a bookkeeper, the more processes you can have in place for yourself and for your staff or your, you know, your coworkers, that is gonna help you out a lot. So, you know, maybe every Monday you look and check the insurance company and then every Tuesday you like follow up with the open invoices and you figure out what needs to be paid. Maybe you can keep people's credit cards on file somewhere in a secure location and charge the credit card. So like get their permission to automatically charge when they have a balance. And make sure your office is doing clear payment terms. So usually when you go to the doctor, you have to sign a bunch of papers and some of those papers have to do with payment. So there's probably saying something like, you need to pay this amount by a certain time. If your insurance doesn't cover it, you still have to pay, all that kind of stuff. So make sure those contracts and things are in place to help you out as a medical biller 
bookkeeper. And you might even be able to give feedback to the owners about which insurance companies pay better and pay quicker. Because I think a lot of the time, some of that is negotiable, either the rates or how much they cover. Because I know doctors are constantly like switching insurance companies or sometimes some some of them will drop off. So in my opinion, I think you can always give your opinion about what you think about certain providers, and then maybe that will help the business run more smoothly overall. And number five goes along with the collections piece, it's write-offs. So in my kind of brief medical billing um, period, I had to do more write-offs than I have for any other client. So I'm not gonna go into the details about this, but basically, but basically if it's been a while and you know the money is not going to be collected, there's a way in probably in their medical billing software and or in QuickBooks that you can write it off so that it's not counted as income. So it's not, you know, you don't, you're not continually waiting for that income to come in and it will help you in your taxes as well. Leave me a comment down below if you have any other resources for medical billing that would be helpful to us. And don't forget to check out my free masterclass, Is Bookkeeping Right For You? So if you're just thinking about being a bookkeeper and you're not sure, take that free class. All right, thank you so much for staying to the end of this video. I really appreciate it. Um, don't forget to give me a thumbs up because that helps me out a lot. Thank you guys. Bye.